Waxahachie ISD is a growing school district that embraces innovative curriculum and teaching methods while still honoring our traditions of excellence. Our academic programs and exceptional teachers and staff allow every student to excel on every campus every day. Waxahachie ISD's fine arts, athletic, career and technical education, and other extracurricular programs are respected throughout the state for their long histories of success. We are proud to be a vital part of the city of Waxahachie as we work hard each day to educate the next generation of our city's leaders. We are Hatchie Forever. Well tried. Hi, welcome to Becky's Kitchen. It's a hot summer day. Well, it's a hot summer, summer, right? And uh, the flowers and the grass look pretty pink and yucky. But the peaches are fabulous right now. They're finely uh, soft and juicy and sweet. So I'm taking advantage of that, and we're not going to make peach cobbler today, but we are going to make peach cobbler cookies today. And just like all cookies, it starts out with butter and sugar. And that's what we're going to do first. We're going to put our, this is one cup of butter, and I mean butter, not oleo, the real thing, in our mixing bowl. And it's one cup of white sugar. And then it is a third a cup of brown sugar that you pack down so you get a lot of it. Now before I start on that at the mixer, I'm just going to get everything else ready. So now these are the like wet ingredients and now it's time to do the dry ingredients. This is three cups of just regular flour, and I'm going to be adding all the uh, spices and everything that go with it. Now, I learned something, because this has cream of tartar in it, and I thought, I use it like in uh, whipping cream and um, meringue and everything. I didn't really know what it was, so I looked it up today. It is the byproduct of fermenting grapes. <laughs> it comes out of the wineries, but it is acidic, and uh, like in this case, if you mix it with baking soda, it causes the, well, the scientific thing, it causes the air bubbles to stay in there instead of burst, and it keeps the sugar from crystallizing, which gives you the difference between a soft cookie or a crisp cookie. So we're going to have a soft cookie today. And um, let's get all of the mixing things ready to go. We need, um, of this baking soda, one teaspoon. Let's get this because... And this is the coolest thing. One end is a teaspoon, one end is a tablespoon. Cool. I got it from Etsy. That looks like a big teaspoon, but that's what it said, so that's what we're going for. Okay. One teaspoon of baking soda and one teaspoon of cream of tartar. And these are going to be the softest, uh, well, just the most delicious cookies you've never had before, I bet. Half a teaspoon of salt, so I'll just, and I always go light on salt anyway, I, but I know every recipe has it in there, so I'll put it in there. And one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, and I'm using the good stuff, Vietnamese cinnamon. And you can really smell the difference. And of course the nutmeg, I just keep these little nutmegs in this jar and get my little grater. And I don't measure. I just kind of spread it around. You can't have too much or too little nutmeg. Okay, let me make sure I have everything there. Cinnamon, cream of tartar, baking soda, salt, nutmeg. Okay, now i am just mix this together. So after I get the sugar and the butter all, blended together, then we'll add this and it'll be already kind of mixed. Now, we're also going to put in some uh, liquid extracts that I'll tell you about over there, but of course, you got to have peaches. And this is one cup of, and you really need to dice them small. Make them about the size of an M&M chip because they are going to be sprinkled throughout the cookies. So we have our peaches and they'll, they will go in last. All right. Now I guess we are ready to get the sugar and the butter mixed up and then we'll add our dry ingredients. Stop it for a second and make sure get the 
Let's wipe the sides down. It's not ready yet because it's not fluffy enough, I can tell. I'll give it a few more minutes. I put all the way to the top. It's starting to get lighter in color. I don't know how that happens, but it is. Okay. Now we'll add one egg, and it's it's been at room temperature, and that's the best way to do it. You really don't want to put anything cold in there because then it messes up the leavening and all that. Now, I'll just do the egg for a couple of seconds. Okay, now, one teaspoon of vanilla. Now, the original recipe called for one teaspoon of almond extract. Because I think peaches and almonds are in the same family. I think I remember that. But I found something better. Peach schnapps. This is left over from the 4th of July, and a lot of it left over. And so I thought, well, I think, you know, peach cobbler cookies would taste real good with a little bit of peach schnapps. In it. So that's what we're going to do. And instead of one teaspoon, I'm putting three. I would put more, except I was afraid I would mess with the, uh, make it too soupy. Okay. Okay, now it's time to put in the dry ingredients. I'm going to do it a little bit at a time so we don't have a snowstorm. Well, snowstorm sounds pretty good today. A little bit. A little bit more. I can smell the cinnamon and the nutmeg. It smells good. Ah, see, we've got a storm. So when you're adding the dry ingredients, you, you don't want to beat it too much because it breaks down the gluten, unless you don't like gluten. And this dough is very um, stiff. And the next step, and the last step besides baking it, is to put in the peaches. All right, the last step is to put in the peaches. And the directions on the recipe said, stir in the peaches. Mm, this, is, this is tough dough. So I will use gloves and I will mush them up together because I like to play in dough anyway. But I have to tell you a story. The first time I made these, I made them. I was making them for a funeral lunch. And I had on my, this ring right here. But I thought, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get dough all over my ring. So I took it off and I laid it on the island somewhere. And after I get the cookies all um, made, they're baked and they're ready to go, I picked up a towel off the island and I, I didn't, and I heard something fall to the ground. And it was the wedding ring and the other ring, two rings. And I found the wedding ring, but I didn't find this ring. I looked everywhere. I looked in the trash. I looked in the garbage disposal. I crawled around on the floor. It was nowhere to be found, so I assumed it was in one of those cookies. And I was taking them to a lunch thing, and I, I watched everybody bite into every cookie because I just knew somebody was going to bite into a ring. And no, so I, then I started looking, how can I replace this ring? Couldn't find it anywhere. A couple of days ago, I pulled out the uh, egg carton, and this ring was sitting on the top of an egg. Somehow, when I picked up the towel, it flipped it, and it landed on the top of an egg. So I got my ring back, but I'm not taking any more chances. All right, so this is one cup of really good diced sweet peaches. 
and I'm going to mush them in there because you want to make sure that every bite the cookie has good peaches in it. I can't tell you how delicious these cookies are. They're so unique and soft and now we know why because it has prima tartar in there. It kept the sugar from crystallizing. I didn't put any sugar or anything on the peaches. I just diced them up. Okay, now you can make them into about one inch. You can use a spoon, probably better, if you want them all to be kind of basically the same. I kind of just roll them in a ball like this, and I will definitely do this. I put, you know, about an inch apart or so. And then smash them down a little bit. It makes a pretty good, it depends on how big you want to make them, but, you know, it makes several dozen, maybe three. The oven is, needs to be at 350 degrees, and these will bake for 14 to 16 minutes. You don't actually need for them to turn, you know, very brown. If you do, they won't be as soft, but they'll still be good. And they certainly don't have to be perfect. You can also use these cookies to make ice cream sandwiches by just getting some softened, I would say vanilla ice cream, and make a little sandwich with two cookies and keep them in the freezer. It's a good little treat. Okay, now let's make sure they're kind of You can see the little pieces of peach sticking out of each cookie, and they, they look like that when they're done, too. The peaches don't melt or brown or anything like that. So this goes in a 350-degree oven for 14 to 16 minutes. I actually did the 16 minutes, and they were fine. They were perfect. So after the cookies have cooled, peel them on the rack and store them in a closed container. They'll last for like, well, they'll probably not last for even one day because they'll be eaten up, but you know, three days. But they do have fruit in them, so eat them up. But you can eat them for breakfast with coffee. Really good, I tried that this morning. But you know, it's too hot to be outside, but it sure isn't too hot to sit down with a glass of iced tea and some peach cobbler cookies and just, chill out the best way you can. I hope you try this recipe. It will be on our website at ellisdownhome.com. And thank you for coming to Becky's Kitchen.